Hello and thank you for attending today's webinar on new louver selections presented by Ruskin product experts Joe Rockhold, Jay Ramkumar, and Cody Jakes. The webinar today will be approximately 45 minutes long, followed by a Q&A session. If you have any questions during the webinar, please use the box with the question mark in the upper right corner of your screen to submit them. All questions will remain anonymous and will only be seen by the presenter. If we do not get to all questions, we will send out the answers after this presentation. At the conclusion of today's webinar, we will, you will receive a certificate of attendance, a link to the recording of this presentation, and a registration link for next week's webinar on data centers. Thank you again for attending, and I will now turn it over to Joe to begin the presentation. Hello, my name is Joe Rockhold. I'm the Louver Product Marketing Manager for Ruskin Company. A little bit about myself. I've been with the company for 20 years. Um, I was started off in field service and have worked my way up the, up the company, working both in sales and engineering. Formerly, I was the R&D lab manager, which I feel gives me a, a really unique perspective on our products and how to test and develop them and to bring them to market. So going through the agenda, um, today's agenda we will cover test standards. I will, I will go over the test standards and how they relate to product development. Um, new products from Ruskin, new product installation overview, and specifying louvers will all be covered by Jay. And then Cody will finish up with new tools to help engineers specify louvers. So before we begin the discussion of new products, I feel it's important for us to understand the testing criteria that the products are subjected to for a better understanding of their real world applications. The AMCA 500L standard details how louvers are to be tested for such things like free area measurements, pressure drops, water penetrations, wind driven rain testing, air leakage, and so on. We see this standard referenced a lot on job specifications, statements like a louver shall be tested in accordance to 500L. The reason why 500L is so important is it allows all the products to be tested the same way so that the customer can get a true apples to apples comparison between manufactured products. Two of the biggest performance callouts for job specifications are free area and water efficiency, which sometimes doesn't actually fit the, the true intent of the louver and how it should be applied in the building. So let's look at all the different tests in this standard so we have a better understanding of what has been launched. To start, we're going to talk about pressure drop testing. The objective of this test is to determine the relationship between air flow rates and pressure drop from the louver. Basically, how much added pressure does the louver add to your system? This test is extremely important because the pressure drop determines how energy efficient your fan system can be in bringing in fresh air or, say, exhausting out hot air. Per the standard, the test size is a 48 by 48 square louver. And AMCO will run five velocity test points measuring the differential pressure across the louver. Part of the pressure drop test is a free area measurement. Amper will always run a free area measurement before testing. They test, they measure the ID of the louver and the gaps in between the louver blades. Once it's measured, we, the manufacturer, can then calculate what the free area is at a variety of different sizes, and you can see that in that chart. Next, we're going to move to the AMCA 500L water penetration test. This test was developed to define the beginning point of water penetration by finding the intake velocity at which water begins to penetrate through the louver. How this test is performed, using drip pan manifold, water is collected and droplets are produced falling directly in front of the louver. There is roughly around 36 nozzle droplets in each droplet rate, and the droplet rate is four inches per hour per each droplet location. The test performed is, is performed on the same size louver as the pressure drop sample, a 48 by 48 sample. And AMCO will run two to four intake velocity points and run up to a maximum test velocity of 1,250 feet per minute, which is the maximum velocity AMCO can certify. After this, we're going to move to AMCO 500L wind driven rain testing. The objective of this test is to specify a method for measuring the water rejection performance of louvers as its subjected simulated rainfall rate and, pressure, and wind pressure. This can be tested with or without intake airflow. As you can see, the test size is a little different. It's a meter by meter square louver that's tested. 
And there's a couple things that the that the lever subjected to. A wind gust of 29 or 50 miles an hour hits the face of the lever, and air and air intake velocity is set between zero meters per second and all the way up to five meters per second. And this pulls or sucks air through the lever. And then a simulated rainfall rate of three inches per hour or eight, and eight inches per hour is, is supplied. For this test, the specimen can be tested with or without a sill pan. So it's usually up to the manufacturer to decide what they want to provide for the test. Continuing with wind-driven rain, the performance is based on efficiency, how well water stays out. As you can see, from the table, class A is the best, 99% efficient. This is efficient to keep water out at a specific intake velocity and wind gust. From this test, chart the velocity and what class of efficiency it is, as you can see from the table above. To me, this is one of the, the most deciding factors on if we develop a product or not. If the wind driven rain lever isn't efficient to keep rain out, then no one will want to use it as a water, as water protection. So those are the, the four basic products tests that we'll run. The AMCA 511 is a certification standards. So this standard tells us manufacturers how to implement all the results from the different 500L tests, what we can and can't see on the product data sheets, and AMCA validates or verifies that the data in the product data sheet is per what was tested. When approved by AMCA, it goes into their CRP program, which is a certified ratings program, and then they become basically the third party validator of the product, which then the product becomes subjected to periodic check tests and the such. Why the certified rating program is so important, it tells the customer that the data on the data sheet is accurate. It promises fair competition between competitors and, is, and assures the customer that the product they receive meets their performance needs. Notice the AMCA seals. If you don't see an AMCA seal on a product data sheet, be very cautious about that data. Next, we're going to move away and start talking about other tests, um, specifically the AMCA 540 impact test. This is an impact standard developed around ASTM 1886 and 1996. This standard tells us how fast to shoot the louver, where to shoot them, what size requirements, and so on. There are two protection levels, Missile D, which is basic protection, and Missile E, that is enhanced protection. For Missile D, the missile speed is 50 feet per second, whereas for enhanced protection, or Missile E, the missile speed is 80 feet per second, which doesn't seem like a lot, but in reality, they are quite different. And let me tell you that missile E is a, is a hard test to pass. The test sizes are as follows. We test th three samples. The first sample is a minimum wide, usually 12 inches, by 36 inch tall sa sample. The second sample is a maximum unsupported blade span by maximum height sample. And the third sample is a maximum unsupported blade span by my by maximum height multi-section assembly. The path of criteria is basically the missile can't go through the liver. When it's impacted, the liver can't have stuff breaking off of it and, and, and becoming missiles itself. Um, the missile can't create a hole bigger than three inches into the liver. And the biggest and most common failure would be if a louver member um, breaks away from its perpendicular member, such as like a blade tearing away from a jam. Also in this test is, a, is an optional TAS-203 cycle test that we choose to perform if we want to choose to perform it. Where I see the standard dri driving the spec is where equipment inside a building is required, requires some kind of protection from flying debris during a storm event. Now we're on to AMCA 550. This is a high velocity wind driven rain standard. This is for extreme conditions where water protection is the most important factor. Water is supplied to a wind generator using a spray nozzle system to simulate the fall rate of 8.8 .8 inches per hour over the test specimen. Four speeds are performed starting at 35 miles an hour and stepping up to a maximum wind speed of 110 miles an hour. The total duration time for the test is 70 minutes. The pass fail criteria of this, this standard is the lever cannot allow more than 1% of the total water sprayed at it to go through, which basically calculates out to a half of a five gallon bucket. Where I see this standard driving the spec is where buildings that have essentially 
equipment, such like say, such like a generator or something like that, that needs to stay running during a storm event. So you want to keep water out of out of there so it doesn't uh, flood. From the AMCA 540 and 550, we go to the AMCA 512, which is our listing standard. This is what we have to follow if we want to list our product to AMCA 540 and 550. So it's a lot, it's set up very similar to AMCA 511. Um, it tells the manufacturer how to present the data to AMCA, how to list, what the listing should say on the data sheets. Um, and then once it's approved, to, uh, tells us what labels to use. Once AMCA approves the, the louver and lists it on their website, then AMCA becomes basically the third party validator of the product um, and then is also subject to periodic check tests. If you note, notice how many different labels there are available. Uh, we still have the same old standard ones like impact levels and wind driven rain levels, but uh, AMCA has recently added some new ones to clarify what was tested. Say, for example, if a louver and a damper are tested together, but to pass AMCA 550, the damper has to be closed. We have a separate label for that. Notice the label that says high velocity rain resistant with blades fully closed. For most louvers, if it's a louver by itself, you know, it'll be, it'll state something like high velocity rain resistant with blades fully open. That's the big difference. This was done purposefully so the customer understands the conditions that the product has to be to meet the advertised performance uh, during a uh, storm event. Next, we're gonna move off of AMCA into Miami-Dade standards. We have the TSA 201, 202, 203, and 100A. This standard is specifically is specifically for qualifying products to, for Miami-Dade for reasons to receive a, a NOA or notice of acceptance. We'll start first with the TAS 201. This is a specific missile test impact standard referenced in the FBC and is used to qualify Miami-Dade products. It is very similar to AMCA 540, but there are some unique differences. The size and weight of the missile used are the same. However, the louver distance and impact locations are different. Also, for day to qualify, I have to test a maximum single session size that I plan to sell or list. But if I plan on selling it as an unlimited width multi-section assembly, I have to test that size instead. So for example, when qualifying the ELF 6375DXD, it, which has a, ma a maximum single section size of 84 by 120 inches, uh, because we want to sell it as an unlimited width product, I have to test three assemblies that are two by one assemblies. All three of these assemblies get impact tested. So my sample sizes become huge. They become 180 in 168 inches by 120 inches, and there's three of them. So, so it's a pretty big investment when we when we go down that road of qualifying a Miami Day product. Moving forward onto the 202 test. This is a static pressure test, in, in which my opinion is the hardest of the three Miami Day tests to pass. Um, you only, this only gets subjected one, to one sample. It requires three load tests in both positive and negative directions. The first is a 50% design load. The second is at design pressure. And the third is at 1.5 times the design load. So, so say for example, we're using um, the new AC 700 MD that we're coming out with. It has a design level of 130 PSF. So I have to test it both positive and negative pressures at 65 PSF, at 130 PSF, and at 195 PSF. Once I get to that pressure, I've got to hold it for 30 seconds. And then my pass fail criteria is if a connection breaks or a frame member breaks or falls off, um, or there's permanent displacement that is measured that's over an eighth of an inch after the after the test is shut down, those are all considered fail points. Next, we're gonna to move to the TAS-203, which is a cycle wind pressure test. This is test is actually performed on all three test samples and follows impact testing. So we shoot it first, and then we put it up on the wall and we cycle test them. The sample is sealed to the chamber so that air, so the air can be supplied to and exhausted from the sample. The sample is cycled at 40% load, at 60% load, and 130% of the design load. 
So once again, using HC700MD as an example, I'm going to do 600 cycles at 52 PSF. I'm going to do 70 cycles at 78 PSF, and I have to do one cycle at 169 PSF. In the past, and I have to do it in both directions, positive and negative. The pass fail criteria for most is pretty much the same as the TSA 202. Stuff can't break off, um, no permit displacement or disfigurement. Lastly, I'm going to cover the TAS 100A. This is another high velocity wind driven rain test. Actually, it's kind of like the father or grandfather of the AMCA 550. Um, it was developed back in the 90s after Hurricane Ender went through Florida. Um, this method is also very similar to AMCA 550 um, ex for, with, a, with a few notable exceptions. For example, at 35 and 70 miles per hour, no water is allowed to go through the river. And, on, and at 90 and 110 miles an hour, you're only allowed half of a percent of the total water sprayed at it can be allowed to go through the louver, um, which is basically then half of half of a five gallon bucket. Um, the standard is kind of being phased out, I think, uh, because of the popularity of AMCA 550. We're seeing it more in specs than we are the TAS 100A. And even Miami Dade accepts AMCA 550 as a substitute for TAS 100A. So with that, that concludes my portion of this presentation. I'm now going to turn it over to Jay to talk about new products. Hey, thank you, Joe. Uh, thanks for the, the detailed overview of uh, AMCA and Miami-Dade. Uh, so um, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Jay. Um, I lead up the Luber department here at Ruskin. I've been here uh, the last um, year and a half. Prior to that, I was uh, with Dyke and Applied for 11 years, leading up here, light air handler, fan call business, and previously, uh, prior to Daikin, um, I worked as an MVP project manager on um, for Mortison Construction um, on military projects. All right? Why Ruskin? Right? Uh, that, that's that's kind of the first question. I mean, we are the industry leaders when it comes to uh, louver design. Uh, we use CFD and FEA analysis to really, um, you know, design our blades to create. Um, proper blade profile for the lowest pressure drop and best performing um, water efficiency. So we use the CFD analysis to really uh, minimize pressure drop, maximize free area, um, the best blade deflection, and really to speed the market. So as you can see here, this just shows uh, the, you know, so a model of, uh, of our Louvre products. Um, going through a wind driven uh, rain performance. So we're really using the CFD FEA analysis to really uh, drive product development at Ruskin. So our first new product I want to introduce you guys to is the 8C700, right? What's cool about this louver? So this is a new seven inch louver. It has a horizontal ELF 400 at the front of the louver and a vertical EME 3625 at the back of the louver, right? So the back of the louver is more for performance. The front of the louver is more for aesthetic. So you combine it together, you get our new HC700 louver, which is a uh, mechanically fastened product. Um, and I'll go through some of the performance of this new louver that we're launching here at this webinar. So for the engineers, you want to drive the specs using this HG700 louver. Uh, so a couple of things is AMCA 540, 550 listed, right? It's going to be Miami Dade also. So we're going to have a non-Dade and a Dade version of this louver. Um, you'll see as, as we launch this product, it will be a Miami Dade and a non-Dade. 53% uh, free area, right? AMCA 540 missile D and missile E impact, right? The horizontal front of the blade, uh, front ELF 400. Uh, also, look at the, the, the wind load. We're designing this louver for 130 PSF. Uh, so, very cool looking louver. We're also launching the front of the louver, the ELF 400, and then at the back of the louver, the EME 3625 as separate products. And I'll go through that as we're going through this webinar. So, just to highlight some competitive comparison here. Uh, so, most of the competitors are nine inch louvers. So, we have a seven inch louver. Our previous model is that eight and a half inch louver where we were 38% uh, free area. Now we're 53% free area. Also, you can see class A wind driven rain performance 
at both 29 miles per hour and 50 miles per hour. And as I mentioned, the 130 PSF is what we designed this louver for. So Dade, we just got finished uh, designing this louver and getting it certified for Dade. So you'll see that in the next couple months here coming out in the HZ700 MD, which will be the Miami Dade version, and the HZ700 will be the non-Miami Dade version of this product. So another new product we're launching in this webinar here is the EME3625 TFL and the MD, right? So this is the back portion of the HZ700. Uh, so it's AMCA 540, 550 listed. Uh, the new Florida building code, uh, we've tested that and passed that. So you'll see this product coming out with that. Also look at the free area. The free area is 53% compared to 45%. Um, in previous model, and uh, the, the, we've also increased uh, the maximum sh ship sections uh, to 60 to 96, and the wind load um, also designed the maximum wind load uh, on this product here as a standard product would be 120 PSF. So as you look, um, very, very strong, strong product uh, for the marketplace. If you're looking for a three inch wind driven rain louver, this is your product. Also look at the water penetration um, uh, rating there for class A, 29 miles per hour, 50 miles per hour, very high um, feet per minute. Not a new product that we've, that we've recently launched and we're coming out with here um, is the new EME 720, which is a seven inch louver. So we have an active and inactive section in this louver, 56% free area. Also, these louvers have uh, a great pressure drop, a less, uh, you know, uh, less pressure drop, which, which helps with your system design, and I'll cover that in detail later. Um, but as you can see from a free area percentage uh, compared to all the major competitors, uh, we're, we're much higher, and also from a wind-driven percentage, we're much higher. The, the great thing with this louver, it's an aesthetically pleasing louver, but then you can, um, you know, you can have an inactive and an active section. So if you don't want the active section throughout the building, you can save significant costs by just adding a blank off and having an inactive section. So as you can see here, this is one of the new projects that we've, uh, we've just won with the EME 720 Hess Tower in Houston, Texas, right? Um, as you can see, we have a lot of cutouts and, and very highly custom um, uh, product here uh, with the EME 720. Um, so as you can see, this is a pretty cool looking product um, and we've designed because of it's Houston, we've designed this to uh, to accommodate the higher wind load. What we have internally at Ruskin, we have a team of civil engineers that can design, help engineers design louvers to any specific wind load and, and, and spec requirement. Next new product that we're launching here in this webinar is the BLD, the Bold Line Louver 723, which is a seven inch louver. So this product was, uh, unlike some of the HZ700 and, and, the, um, and the EME3625 that I mentioned before, this product was more designed for architects in mind that wanted an accent blade in their Luba design, but wants also want you know, excellent pressure drop and great wind-driven rain performance, right? So there's the large blade, which is a seven inch wide blade, and then there's a smaller blade, which is a five inch uh, wide blade. And you can change the color of the blades, all those things, with this product. 49% uh, free area, a great pressure drop, so you don't have to use a lot of fan energy and your system uh, will will have will use less energy. Um, uh, as you can see, tested in accordance with AMCA 500L. Another new product we're launching here in this webinar here and uh, is the Perf options on all of these Miami Dade version. So why we did this is lots of architects want to use wind driven rain louvers but they don't want to see the blades, right? So what we have done here at Ruskin is add a perf design to all our main Miami Dade models. So the EME um, 520, EME 5, uh, 220, and also some other models such as the ELF 211, ELF uh, 837. So with the perf option comes with three different framing, the box, the universal sleeve, and the glazing frame, right? And we've also calculated uh, pressure drop, wind driven rain performance, uh, you know, including uh, the perf option. So engineers know exactly what performance they're getting when they're selecting a perf option. So if you're looking for a design where you want the wind driven rain performance, but doesn't want the, the look of the blade, this is a great option for you. Now a product that we are launching here is the EME 420 
520 DDE, which um, the 520 is the, the five inch uh, wind driven rain enhanced. So as you can see, um, compared to our competitors, excellent free area, excellent wind driven rain performance. As you can see, this is the this is the team with all the new products we're coming out with, really driving uh, the industry in terms of uh, energy use uh, because of the free area, low pressure drop, and also uh, wind driven rain performance, making sure that, that uh, very, very little or no water getting into your building. So this is the Army Hotel here, or where we've installed the EME 420DD, one of the new products, and the ELF 837. So as you can see, um, you don't see any, the, we, we've had an architectural mullion in this project. So look at the clean look on this louver and this project. Uh, so very, very cool design here for us. Another project here is the Medical Center in Plano, Texas, right? Where we're using another EME 420DD. Right, um, this was sold by a rep ADW there in Texas. So as you can see, uh, extremely uh, all the cutouts and those kind of things. Uh, as I mentioned, we have an internal uh, staff here who helps with the wind load and those kind of things, help our engineering team with that. Not a new product that we're launching here in this webinar is the AMCA 540-550 louver damper combination. Okay, so one thing, um, that you know the louver damper combination was was made was was developed to meet certain requirements where a building need impact protection but also the AMCA 550 prote protection so we now have four Miami Dade models the ELF 6375DXD ELF 375DXD EME 420MD and the EME 520MD and we've paired this with our dampers which is the CD 40 CD 50 and the SD 60 uh, we're the only manufacturer that has three dampers that are AMCA 550 listed, right? So what this means for you engineers and you contractors is we, you have a, a certified product that's AMCA 540, 550 listed that is manufactured and tested um, and, and, and put together in our factory and then ship out. So quick, you know, ease of installation. Uh, you don't have to put this together in the factory. And also the, the, the peace of mind that this product is, is, um, is, you know, is, is certified before leaving our factory. Not a new product that we've just recently launched, but I just want to mention this is our XP 500 WD, which is extreme performance wind driven rain louver. It's a five inch deep louver um, that meets uh, specifically designed to meet uh, ICC 500 impact for tornado shelters. Uh, so this is a patent pending blade design. Uh, so what, what the, this product differentiates from the other products in the market. It not only provides the FEMA 361 protection, but it also offered a class A wind driven uh, rain protection through AMCA, right? So it has both the FEMA protection and the class A wind driven rain protection where engineers would use this product in tornado regions. As you can see uh, throughout the middle of the United States, we've seen a lot of these products being used in critical facilities such as data centers, hospitals, that want to, you know, to have these strict requirements. As you can see, this product is developed uh, for 300 PSF, and this is a patent pending uh, design uh, through Ruskin. Not a new product that we've launched um, that I want to highlight is the ELF 6350 DMP. This is our um, data center louver, and the reason for that is the, the excellent free area, low pressure drop, and then great performance on the wind driven rain performance. So this louver has been the basis of design for a lot of data centers uh, throughout North America because of these features. Compared to other competitors out there, you can see how better it's performing. Last product, the new product that I want to mention is the EME 520V, uh, which is a five inch vertical uh, uh, wind driven rain louver that's screw fabricated. Uh, so um, just some, some things, uh, pressure drop, uh, 0.18, very excellent pressure drop and class A wind driven rain performance, 2037, 2,237 feet per minute compared to the competitors out there. So I'll touch a little bit on ease of installation for some of these new products. So most of our new products, uh, the ease of insulation. Uh, so we have angle and anchor method and uh, flange and sleeve. Those are the two main things that we're offering on the ease of insulation. So our angle and anchor method is the most common uh, method. Uh, so we have clip angles, continuous angles. Um, and as you can see here, 
uh, for Miami-Dade products approved attachments. So you want to look um, on our Miami-Dade to make sure you have the correct connection type. Uh, you know, make sure uh, you know you you know our minimum edge distance, our spacing. So uh, continuous angles and clip angles are the most common. CMU, uh, you have to be very careful as an engineer, making sure you're um, you know when you're you're uh, installing with CMU, you because CMU is a weaker structure than than concrete. Please make sure you're following our directions and those kind of things. So as you can see here, just just highlighting the CMU uh, because it's 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 so important that that, that you, you pay careful attention to this. Make sure the grout fill the cell, anchor to the back of the wall, as you can see, and the CMU needs to be face uh, fastened to the face of the CMU. The, the anchors need to be fastened to the face of the CMU. The last insulation method I will touch on before turning it over to Cody, who will go over some of the new tools, is the flange and sleeve method. Um, and this is this is a any structural wall construction you can use this method. It's a it's a fast, very fast insulation. It's not as common as the um, clip angle method uh, because it's more costly. Uh, but this is something if you have wall panel um, or any different kind of wall construction, uh, this is a good way to uh, to go about things. We are very flexible in terms of sleeve dimensions, sleeve material, sleeve depth. Uh, to really uh, speed up this process for you. And now I'll turn it over to Cody, who will go over some of the new tools we've launched at Ruskin here to help you um, specify louvers. Thank you, Jay. Uh, my name is Cody Jakes. I am the Southeast Regional Sales Manager here at Ruskin. Uh, I've been with Johnson Controls for over five years now, uh, and I've spent about three of them with Ruskin. I was part of the COVID-19 webinar that we had three weeks back. Uh, I did the energy recovery ventilator piece. This webinar is available on our website uh, and we did record it. So you guys, it's on demand for you guys. Uh, but today I'm here to talk about tools that we offer to help you guys specify leaders. So I think Joe did a very good job uh, summarizing the codes. However, I wanna give you guys the bottom line up front. The code is your friend. If you live in a storm zone, you guys should be specifying AMCA 540 and 550. As you can see on the screen, it is required in some regions. However, if you live outside of these regions, you can still specify AMCA 540 and 550. Uh, I actually began my Johnson Controls career in New England and Connecticut. Uh, once Hurricane Sandy and Nemo rolled through, uh, we actually saw AMCA 540 and 550 start being specified up there. Um, I covered the, co the, the East Coast in the Carolinas and Virginia. Uh, AMCA 540 is really gaining popularity there. Um, and I also cover the Gulf Coast with covering the Southeast. Uh, and AMCA 540 and 550 are very popular in this region. Uh, just because code does not require you to lay out AMCA 540 and 550 does not mean that you should not be specifying it. Just a reminder, AMCA 540 is your missile impact test. AMCA 550 is your wind-driven rain test. Uh, and I also want to point out that you can specify AMCA 540 and 550 without laying out a Miami-Dade louver. Um, if you are concerned about missile impact or water, but you don't need a Miami-Dade install, uh, AMCA 540 and AMCA 550 is where to look. Historically, uh, we used free area to determine high-performing louvers. Free area is really what used to be, what used to determine a good louver. However, high free area does not mean a better performing louver. In 2020, the shape and the aerodynamics of your blade matter. Our wind driven rain louvers are so great at keeping our water out. Uh, pressure drop actually is now your limiting factor. Jay did a great job mentioning the system and your fans. How do you size the fans in your system? Uh, you need to be looking at the pressure drop on your louvers. Uh, and I want to reiterate again, having a higher free area does not mean that you will have a lower pressure drop. Uh, but how do you know your louver performance when you're specifying and laying out a job? Uh, and that's when I'm going to get into Ruskin's uh, selection tool leads, which is available on our website. OK, so leads, I mentioned it. Leads is free, so you go on Ruskin.com, uh, you will find the Leads tool free to use for everybody out there. 
Uh, LEED stands for Louver Engineering and Architectural Design Program. It's an industry first. It's a speedy and quick louver selection. Uh, it will create a schedule for you. But most importantly, you are going to get real performance data uh, in just a few minutes and with just a couple clicks. Uh, so what I'm going to do is walk you guys through leads from start to finish. Okay, so this is the Ruskin homepage. Um, if you just go on ruskin.com, you see the, band, the blue banner going across the top. If you click software, uh, that box will show up and just click right on the leads tool. From here, you have two options. Um, after you agree uh, to our terms and conditions, you can either select a louver, size a louver, uh, or watch some clips on how to use the tool. I'm going to start by walking you through how to select a louver. Okay, so after you click select a louver, this is going to be the first screen that pops up. Uh, just a little zoom in view. What you see here is our different family of louvers, different families of louvers. You have acoustical, adjustable, airflow measuring louvers, combo louvers, hurricane, those are your Miami Dade louvers, stationary blade, and your wind driven rain. Um, for this example, I'm going to use the HZ700 that Jay talked about, uh, and that falls under the wind driven rain category. So your first step is to pick the family of louvers uh, that you want to look at. After you select the family of uh, louvers that you're looking at, we picked wind driven rain. Every wind driven rain louver that Ruskin makes has now populated itself on the right, okay? Uh, so you see the blank spaces on the left, you're gonna go through and enter your conditions uh, in those blank spaces. So you enter your height and your airflow. After you enter the conditions in order to select the louver, you wanna go ahead and click the green plus sign next to the model that you want to select. Uh, you click the plus sign, you see that it's next to the HC700. The HC700 was selected and you can see the real performance data based on the size and CFM that we put uh, actually populates and calculates for you above. Uh, if you have questions, so you can see that here, all of our wind driven rain models are on this screen. Say you're not sure which louver you'd want to pick. Uh, do you need a 3625 or do you need a 520V? If you actually go through and click on the actual model, so not on the plus sign, but if you click the actual model, um, it will take you to Ruskin's homepage uh, where it's going to give you all of the information on that specific model and additional resources uh, for you guys. So all of the Louver information, this is also an interactive catalog for you guys to make it very simple. Okay, so very quickly, we're going to go through sizing a louver. Uh, you'll notice the screen looks a little bit different here. However, it's the same idea. Um, again, you pick your louver family. For this example, I picked wind driven rain. From here, you're going to enter one dimension. Uh, we entered 48 inches on the height. We chose height as our limiting factor. You then uh, enter your performance information, and then you hit that find louvers button right there down the bottom. So once you hit that find louvers, uh, you'll notice that your performance info, what you entered carries over. Uh, you'll also notice if you look at the wind driven rain models on the right, we put in 48 inches on the height, well 48 inches carried over, um, and then you can see the width based on the performance of the louver and what you entered will actually change. Uh, so it's going to tell you what size you need uh, depending on what louver model uh, you're using for your application. Again, to select the louver, we hit the green plus sign. And then once we hit the green plus sign, you can see that it runs the performance information and it selects that louver. Um, right below the louver that we selected, you guys will see tag and quantity and then an add to schedule button. This is how you actually make your schedule. So if you wanted this to be louver one or louver A, you put that in your tag. Uh, and then you put the quantity and you hit the add to schedule button. I, uh, I did an example here where I ran three louvers. Uh, I put some tags and quantities in. This is a louver schedule. You can see it has all the performance info. It has your model info. It has the quantities. Uh, it has all relevant data that you guys would be putting 
on a Louver schedule. From here, you can just save it as an Excel file uh, and export your data to the project that you're working on. So again, we're making it very easy and very quick. You know, in five minutes, I just walked you guys through selecting and sizing a Louver on our free selection tool. Uh, one other cool feature I want to point out very quickly, um, as you guys are working on new projects and starting to work with our reps, you're going to start to see our new dynamic submittals. So these are going to be actual drawings and data based on your project. I know a lot of you guys are used to seeing those gray sheets, um, trying to add a little life, a little bit of color, and give you guys as much detail as possible on our new dynamic submittals. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. Just another way we're making it easy for you guys to specify Rusty. And really quickly, just our takeaways. Uh, embrace the code. Look for AMCA certification. You know, know your region, know where you guys are, and know what you're working on, um, and really embrace the code. We have multiple new louver models out there. The HC700 is a 7-inch combo louver. You get that horizontal blade uh, in the front while also meeting AMCA 540 and 550, the new architecturally pleasing BLD 723, uh, a new three inch Miami Dade rated vertical louver model uh, with very high free area and very low pressure drop. We can also meet AMCA 540 and 550 with our new louver damper combos. And we have a very strong performing ELF 6350 DMP that we see used on a lot of data centers. Um, and then just to summarize, Having a high free area does not mean that you have a low pressure drop. So you always want to be checking your pressure drop and keeping the whole system in mind. And how you do that is using leads. Leads is a free tool for everybody to use on the Ruskin website uh, to specify your movers. And with that, I'm going to pass it back to Tessa. Thanks, Cody. So our Q&A session is now open. Please use the box on the upper right side of your screen to submit any questions you may have. We will respond to all questions we don't get to in an email following the conclusion of this webinar. If you have any further questions after the meeting concludes, please feel free to contact Emma Barnhart. So it looks like our first question here is going to be for Jay, and it is, which louver has been the base of design for a lot of data centers? Uh, thanks, Tessa. So that will be the ELF 6350 DMP um, as being the basis of the design for a lot of data centers throughout North America. And the reason is because of the high free area, low pressure drop and excellent wind driven uh, rain performance compared to any other Luger in that class. Right. Thanks, Jay. So our next question is with the Luger damper combos, can the damper stay open and still meet AMCA 550? Joe, I think this one's for you. Yeah, thanks, Tess. I'll answer that question. Um, so the damper in our system, the damper has to be closed to meet AMCA 550. Right. Thanks, Joe. So the next question is, how do I gain access to the leads program? I'll take that one, Tessa. Um, so again, Ruskin.com, hit the software button on the banner, hit leads. It's free for everybody to use out there. All right, great. Thanks, Cody. Uh, the next question is, what's the difference between the EME 720 and the BLD 723? I'll take that, Tessa. So uh, this is Jay here. So the, the EME 720 is only a seven inch uh, louver that you can have, um, you know, the um, the blank off uh, and, and without the blank off, the BLD 723 is uh, you have a seven inch louver and then you have a five inch, uh, five, seven inch and a five inch blade. So it's a combination louver that's more aesthetically pleasing. Both of them are, are pretty um, aesthetically pleasing louver, uh, but the 720 is just uh, one seven inch and the, and the BLD 723, you have two different blade design, a seven inch and a five inch. Right, all right, thanks Jay. So the next question is, what new Ruskin louver would you want to use in the tornado region? Um, so I'll take that to uh, Tessa. Um, so it'll be the XP 500 uh, WD, and that's, um, as I mentioned, it's a patent pending design. Um, so it's the only louver in the industry that meets the FEMA 361 and then the Class A wind driven rain performance. So that's the louver you want to use 
uh, when you're designing critical facilities in the tornado region. All right, thanks, Jay. So that's all the time you have for questions today, and we thank you for joining our webinar. We will be sending out an email after the meeting concludes with responses to questions, certificates of attendance, and a link to next week's webinar re registration. That being said, please join us next week on September 16th at 1 p.m. Central Time for our discussion on data centers. Thank you again for attending, and we hope you all have a wonderful day.